Hello! Today we're going to be doing the m, m project in Excel. This is a project where you're going to use Excel to create a chart along with a table. So the first thing you need to do is get you three packages of M&Ms or three other types of colored candies. You're going to open up the packages and then you're going to count the colors in the packages. So for the assignment, it lists a plain M&M, peanut M&M, and peanut butter M&M. We are going to take those candies and we're going to make a chart showing the different colors that are in the different packages and the different types of candies. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here on my zoom bar. I'm going to click on that a couple of times to zoom in so you can see my work area a little better. Once we have our candies counted, this is going to be our data. Now we need to enter that data into our screen. So starting in B1, we're going to list the different colors that we have. So for mine, I have blue. I'm going to hit the tab key. I have red, yellow, orange, green, and brown. Then in H1, I'm going to be entering total because I'm going to be totaling all of those up across the screen. Make sure that you spell the colors correctly and that you capitalize them. If you don't have one of these colors, you don't need to use it, but maybe you have a different color. Maybe you have purple. Then you're going to want to add purple to your table. So now, over in our first column, in A2, we are going to put the type of candies. So if you have Skittles, sweet tarts, whatever type of candies that you're looking at, that's what you're going to enter in over here. For mine, I counted plain M&Ms and peanut M&Ms and also the peanut butter M&Ms. Then we're also going to total the number of different colors that we have in our packages. So we have our headings across the top and we have our headings down the side. Now we're ready to enter in our data. Your data might be different than mine and that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and enter my data in here and I'm just going to put the numbers in. And I'm going to put the numbers in for my colored of the peanut. And my colors for my peanut butter M&Ms. So I've got my raw data. At this point in time, I'm going to save my document. So I'm going to come up here to File and I'm going to use Save As just so that I know where I'm going to be putting it. I'm going to go to Browse. I'm going to put mine on my desktop and I'm going to call it Excel M&M Chart with my last name and Save. I'm going to enter in some formulas. There's different ways to enter in the formula and quite honestly it doesn't matter which method that you use to enter in the totals. As long as I see formulas in your total H2, H3, and H4 and also a formula for B5, C5, D5, E5, F5, G5, and H5. Whatever method you use to create the formulas, that's fine as long as there's a formula. I don't just want to see plain numbers entered in. So I'm just going to compare to my auto sum. You can see my little ant tracks are around the correct area and I'm going to hit enter. 
I can do the same thing again. And my ant tracks. It's got the correct range that I'm looking for. I can click enter. And I'm going to do the same down here in H4. I'm just going to come up here to Auto Sum. Look what it's adding together. This is not the correct data range for this cell. This cell is, with this Auto Sum, Excel is saying you want to add up H2 and H3. That's not correct. So what I can do is come over here to B4 and I can select B4 through G8. So now I have some B4 through G4 and that's the correct. So make sure when you're hitting this auto sum that you're taking a look at what range Excel is trying to add up for you and make sure it's the correct range. I'm going to show you a shortcut down here on the total. I want to uh, do the totals in my row 5. I'm just going to select this whole row first and I can come up here to auto sum and it's automatically going to do it for me. As long as it's the information that you're adding is the same in each row, then you can just select the range and then hit auto sum and it'll do it all at the same time. Now remember this little box um, is going to stay there until you type something else and it's okay. So now that I have my totals in my row, now I'm going to format the table. I want to make sure everything is Calibri 11. So if yours is not at Calibri 11, then you'll need to select all of your information and change it to Calibri 11. I'm going to take B1 through H1 and I'm going to highlight it. And I'm going to highlight A2 to A5 and bold. Now I want to auto fit all of my columns. So I can move my mouse up here over A until it looks like the downward pointing arrow. And then I can click and drag down. You can see my mouse changes, but I've got all of my columns selected. Now I can go to the intersection of any of the columns double click and it automatically takes care of the auto fit on my columns. And I'm going to save my worksheet. You can just click up here on the save. For most tables you have a title and maybe a subtitle and we've decided after the fact that we want to add a title and a subtitle. To do that we have to add two blank rows to our document. Adding blank rows is fairly easy. I'm going to come up here on our Home tab and you can see this little Insert tab here. And you can insert just individual cells. You can insert rows, columns, or an entire sheet right here. And I want to insert sheet rows. Do that once. I'm going to come up here and do it again. It's going to insert the row above your active cell. So now we have our two rows here. Our A1, we're going to put comparing M&Ms. Now if you're comparing some other candies, then you want to put what maybe just comparing candies or comparing Skittles or something. And I want to merge and center this title over my entire table. So I'm going to select A1 through H1, go to Merge and Center, and I'm going to go to Cell Styles and change it to title. In A2 I'm going to enter in my name. I'm going to select A2 to H2, merge and center, and then I'm going to come over here to cell styles and make this one heading 1. So I've got my title and my subtitle. I want to do one more thing formatting on this table. I'm going to select A7 through H7 and I'm going to make it the total cell style. So up here on my home tab I've got my cell styles and down over here is total and that's going to put my single line and my double line underneath my totals. I'm going to save. So I've got my data and now I want to insert a chart. A lot of people when they're looking at data 
they would rather see a picture than a bunch of numbers. And it's very easy in Excel to take a bunch of numbers and turn it into a chart. So first thing we have to do is select the range that we want to appear in our chart. We want to select what I refer to as the raw data, just our individual data. When you use your raw data, you want to make sure that you do not also select the total rows. So pay careful attention to the range that you're selecting for your chart. For our chart, we only want this data right here. Uh, between um, B4 to G6. However, we want to make sure our headings also appear in our chart. So we need to select um, blue, red, yellow, orange, green, brown, as well as plain peanut and peanut butter. The only way we can do that is to start up here in H3 or A3. Now A3 is empty and that's fine, it, but we still need to select it because we can only select um, full areas here. So we're going to select the range from A3 and then we're going to drag down to G6. You can see we have our plain peanut peanut butter titles, our color titles. We have everything except our total information which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to come up to the insert tab and we're going to um, select a column chart. So over here on our charts we've got column and I'm just going to select this first 3D column. I'm going to zoom out a little because we're going to take our chart, we're going to click on it when we have the triple or the four headed arrow and we're just going to move it right under here underneath our table and then we need to resize our chart. So we're going to come down here to the lower right hand corner and we're just going to move it to where it fits right underneath our data. There we go. Now, and you, when you have a chart title like this, you never want to leave it just saying chart title. You want to either delete it or you want to add something. So we're going to add comparing M&Ms or comparing candies comparing Skittles, whatever you're comparing, and we're going to make that our chart title. Make sure you spell it correctly. At the bottom of our chart you can see plain peanut and peanut butter. This is referred to as a legend because it's telling us what the chart contains. So we know any time that we see the little blue line we're referring to plain M&Ms. When we see this little red orange line it's referring to the peanut M&Ms and the gray is referring to the peanut butter M&Ms. So referred to as our legend. We want our legend to be on the right side of our chart just so it's a little easier to see. So we're going to come up here. Once we have our chart selected you can see we have chart tools tabs, design and format. On the design of the chart tools, clear over to the left we have add chart element. If we select that, come down to legend, and we can select right. And it's going to move our legend to the right. We want our chart to show the, our types of candies across our bottom axis, our horizontal axis, and we want our colors to be over here in our legend. To do that, we're just going to come right up here to where it says switch row column, and it's going to automatically switch those around for us. So I'm going to select that. You can see now we can see all of our plain, all of our peanut, and all of our peanut butter candies listed together on our chart. We have blue, but this red is more of a red-orange. We want to make sure that the colors of our chart that represent our candies match. So green right now is a blue line. We want that to be green. 
So our blue candy is okay. Our red we want to change. So we're going to come up over to our chart. We're going to click on that bar. You can see we have our little selection circles all around all of our red, orange bars. Up here on our chart tools, if we go to format, we have our shape fill right here. We can click on that and we can change it to red. We can select the little gray bar and that's supposed to be yellow. Let's come up here to shape fill and change that to yellow. Our orange is already orange, but this blue should be green. So we're going to appear to shape fill and change it to green. And our last one should be brown. So we're going to appear to shape fill. And that's over here. We've got our gold color that's the closest to brown. So now we're going to save it. So now we have our chart um, that represents our table. What's really awesome about Excel is that now if we find that maybe our yellow was wrong and we, that instead of three yellow in the peanut butter, it should have been six. We can change it in our table and it's automatically going to change it in our chart too. So that's what makes it kind of fun. Um, if our information in our chart cha table changes, it's going to automatically update in our chart. So make sure your data is correct based on your packages of candy. We're going to save it. And now we have one last thing we want to do. We want to make sure that our chart is centered horizontally and it's also going to be on one page. So we're going to come up here to page layout and we have uh, margins, orientation, size right here. But we also have this little dialog box launcher right here by the page setup. If we click on that, we can see all sorts of information here. We're going to go to the margin section and we're going to come center on page horizontally. Okay. And now if we go to file and print, you can see our chart is listed here it's on our page and it's all on one page and it's centered when we come back to the chart we now you might see a um, dotted line and that's okay that's just showing where the edge of your page is and your yours might be in a different location depending upon how big your chart is and that's fine so once you know it's all on one page, you're going to save it and you're ready to submit your comparing M&M's chart in Blackboard for grading.